Hello and welcome to the 26th video in this series of Program HS Engine on in C. This video we're going to actually use or look at how we use some of the macros that we made in the last video where we looked at setting up our game move. So in main I've put int move equals naught and now I'm actually going to create a move as we would in the game. So I'm going to say let's have our from square is 6 and now we need to bitwise or that because remember all of the bits are going to be in the same integer with the 2 square and I'll say let's call the 2 square 12 and now remember from here that the 2 square is shifted up by 7 bits so we need to shift that by 7 in fact to make this even easier to read I'll say int from equals 6 and int 2 equals 12 so it's easier to visualize and let's also say int captured equals a white rook and int promoted equals a black rook so that's a bit easier now we can use more descriptive terms so now let's say that the captured piece as I've said is a white rook and we need to shift the captured piece remember 14 bits so we simply do it like this and I'm sure you're getting the idea now the last thing we'll do is we need to shift the promoted piece 20 bits if I remember correctly put another bracket around all of this just for safety's sake and now what we can do is we can say let's print this move so we'll print the decimal of the move and the hexadecimal of the move in this way and what we'll also do now is we'll print the binary bits now I've already prepared and if you downloaded the code you'll have this a print binary function here or print bin function very quickly here scrappily written just for this example in this video it'll be deleted then later on from the code but it simply prints 28 bits out to the screen ones and zeros so we can visualize our move exactly as we visualized here so I'll go print bin and move and now let's save this and let's make this and run it and now let's go down here the printing the board isn't really relevant so you can see that our move has a decimal number of 10 million five hundred odd thousand has a hex however of A10606 which is 60601A and a zero here so it's exactly represented num place for place next to the decimal number represents each one of these sets of four bits here which is really convenient and now let's have a quick look what we have we had six as the from square and we know the from square is in the first seven bits and here they are the zero one zero one one zero is the six two square is a twelve a twelve is a one one zero zero and here it is a one a one a zero zero followed by its seven bits because it's been shifted then we've said we've captured a white rook and the white rook I just have to have a quick look is not one two three four so a white rook has a value of four and the capture piece is shifted fourteen so we've got three so there so these first fourteen bits here not excluding and then we've got the one two the third bit which represents the four so the white rook is in there and the one zero one here represents the black rook I assume Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, it does. And you can see that the black rook is fitted in here. So that should be fairly understandable as to how we actually store our move. So once we've stored our move, we can then use our macros to actually retrieve the information. So let's uh, do exactly the backwards of what we've just run. And let's take the from, the to, the captured and the promoted and make a new line and now I'll make this on this line so from square move to square move this is using our macros cap
and promoted move in this kind of way and this should show us the same values that we've originally used for our move I'm just using in case you're wondering these macros then here so if I now make this and run and you can see that indeed we've got from is 6 which it is 2 is 12 which it is captured is 4 which it is for the black white rook and promoted is 10 which it also is for the black rook so there you go that finishes the description of how we go about storing or creating a move in the program which will be done in this way when we generate them and then how we actually use our macros to retrieve the relevant information in the move the only other thing there is to do for example is we could say that the move was a pawn start so we would bitwise or the move flagging for a pawn start this will happen in the move generator in this way and then we would say uh, let's say print f is pawn start and let's just put out a string there for a yes or no and then we simply use a conditional here so we'll just say if the move can bitwise and which it must do because we've just awed in this pawn start in this way then we'll put yes otherwise we'll put no okay in this way so I'll just save and make that just so you can see that that works like this as well and is pawn start is now yes because we've put in this flag if we then take out this flag and make and run we get it's not a pawn start so that's how we then use the flags that are also defined in this section here as well good so I hope that's clear about how we're going to store and use a move inside the program I think in the next video we'll actually prepare to start looking at our move generator and move lists thanks very much for listening comments questions criticisms welcome as always on YouTube